Hello and welcome to episode 20. That's right, the big 2-0. How far we have come. Um, so, a couple of things that I have to talk about before we continue on. Um, I have upgraded these mechanism machines. So they now have speed upgrades and energy upgrades. If I just look up upgrade. <clears throat> we have these two upgrades here, the energy upgrade. It took some enriched alloy uh, and some gold dust, and it's the same for the speed one except some osmium dust in the middle. So you didn't miss much there. Um, I had lots of resources so I thought I'd spend them so that this doesn't have to do so much work, although it's already empty again. Um, the other thing I did is I had to install a magma, magma crucible, fluid transposer and pulverizer, and I'll show you why. As you can see here, there's some eulorium if you recognize it. Um, so the other thing I did is you can see uh, poking out in the background there two ins and an out that's because what I've done is I've uh, created a hidden toggle latch for this thing here what was happening was a bit of a I'm not sure quite sure whether to call it a bug or not um, but if this was functioning while these needed to um, charge then they wouldn't mine very well so what I did is I set up this remote so I can turn it off when I'm in range so that my uh, mining isn't disturbed. Uh, the other thing I did was I did so much mining. Oh boy, let me show you that. Alright, here we are in the mines. So, a few of these were here already, but this is new. This is new. Old, old. Those two are old, but from about here onwards is brand new. And you can see every tunnel, and they're so deep. They just go for miles. Because I needed lots of diamonds, because we have a really big project today. Um, I know I said we were going to work on aesthetics, and we still will, but that's why I've done all this work ahead of time, because I didn't want to um, spend the entire episode doing this big project. Um, so you just get to see the fun building part. Um, so, let me get back to the room. Here we are back here. So, the project today, or at least the start of the episode, will be... Also, you'll notice in my inventory, actually, that I went to a lot of dungeons. Because I also needed a lot of ender pearls. Um, and you can see most of my ender pearls are used up. I only have 16 left. I have a lot more healing potions. I went to so many little dungeons that were around the place, and you didn't miss out anything. All the bosses were repeats of the ones that we've done before, um, and there was nothing really new. And I actually found out that there's some config changes that I have to make some way to unintegrate Ars Magica with Chocolate Quest. Because I don't want Chocolate Quest, um, or Ars Magica mobs in Chocolate Quest dungeons for this pack. So in this chest, which is brand new, is our project, the reactor. <laughs> this is all the mining, 20 blocks of diamond. This is all the enderpearls, 16, so that's 64 enderpearls melted down, 16 buckets of resonant ender. And enough reactor parts for a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven big reactor. So I'm going to take all of this, hopefully it'll fit, probably not actually. Yeah, so that's going to be an issue. <laughs> I'll have to come back down. But, fortunately from all that dungeon delving I got a whole lot of hook shots. This is going to allow me to get down without having to use my flight potion. Also ahead of time, I dug out this enormous room. <laughs> I am calling it the heart of the mountain and basically it's 30 blocks high I'm not actually sure about its um, its radius I also made a second ender pouch to put tools into I thought that might be useful by now because I have so many so many different tools but our room is 30 high and 27 um, width and length so it's enormous, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, and we're going to get started making 
this thing into the powerhouse of our base. Uh, because quite frankly I got sick of spending all my coal on a thermal generator and wanted to skip straight to this. I had the resources to do it, so why not? So 7 by 7. So the way that a big reactor works is that it's hollow in the centre and then has, um, well, apart from uh, fuel rods. And those fuel rods are used to, uh, or fill up and react with inside the reactor. Well, I guess that's why it's called a reactor, right? Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Um, but then also around the outside you have all this interaction stuff. It's an actual gigantic multi-block. Um, I tend to like it a little bit more than I like IC2 reactors. IC2 reactors can be more complex um, outwardly, like interaction-wise a lot more complex for IC2. And I, I like that um, complexity, but uh, mathematically these big reactors seem to actually be more complex um, in the way that you design them uh, physically. And I much prefer to design things through blocks, as I've said in the past, in earlier episodes, than I do um, through the uh, use of items. Um, just because I like to be able to fill space with big machines, you know. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to need to go back up quite soon and I'll show you how I get out of here because as you saw I don't have my flight potion on me <laughs> uh, yep I do need to go up all right so this is how you do it hook shot one reel in jump oh no not quite <laughs> reel in let go shoot again reel in let go shoot the roof <laughs> Hardcore, hardcore skills. Oh, I'm bouncing around like crazy. Alright. Yeah, see that? Skill shot. And then... Whoop. I think it's a lot easier now. <laughs> and then I get far enough up that I can just... Whoop. Sometimes it bugs out a little bit and then I drop down and that happens. Whoa. All right, turns out my uh, feather in my inventory from Chocolate Quest, which stops me from dying from uh, long falls, was getting set off a little bit with that. Uh, something I also did is uh, I've filled out this entire hallway with travel stones, which is handy. Now I'm sure, where are my other reactor casings? Oh, I put them in the bag. I am literally the worst. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, I am going to utilize this space. Here we go. Lots of resin in the buckets. I'm literally the worst. I didn't even need to climb out. Okay, um, back we go. <laughs> I'm sure you all noticed. Crunch. It takes a little bit of damage. It's really handy that. Possibly a bit cheap because it's just one feather surrounded by... Um, that is too much. One feather surrounded by gold. But it's cool. And these are uh, control rods. They need to be on the top of the rig to what happened to my fifth one. Thank you very much. Things are being weird and buggy. Try to ignore that. I hope it's not too dark in here. Looking at that, it looks a bit dark. But it also doesn't help that this metal is quite dark. And unlike most people, I... I think it's weird having too much glass in a reactor. So this reactor doesn't have a lot of glass to look in. <laughs> so um, next part of my design was like this. Yes, I also pre-calculated everything. Um, 
to the point where there is exactly two reactor casings left over after all of this. There we go. Then I just need to fill those in. Yeah, this won't be time lapsed because it's just fun to see how a multi block like this comes together. Excuse me. Oh, I know why. Never mind. You'll see. Power taps and Elorium fuel rods. There, there, there. They emit light, which is handy for this. For the YouTube recordings. So these things, are, they fill with the fuel once you've injected it into the system. Um, and I'm just going to go around and put in the reactor glass. These reactors also look so cool. Just my favorite part, really. They just look amazing. Here we go. All right, so that's all four sides, I think. No, it's not. I have 10 left. All right, now I want to knock out this one and this one and this one and then where is that hole it must be on this side i'm confused oh no i have three reactor casings here it is now reactor controller reactor port and that's an inlet mode, that's where I want it. And actually I want it over here opposite the inlet. Outlet. Because any good nuclear reactor has waste. And there we go, a completed multi-block reactor. And you can tell it's completed because it changed its look entirely. It's now got these edges and these panels and it looks great, <laughs> basically. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually I need to get on top and I'm going to use my hookshot to do that because I realized <laughs> that I'm a dum-dum and needed to get inside. Alright, I'm not sure why that didn't work. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a bit tricky. I need to get on top. Reel in. I keep forgetting that it's reel in and not jump. Right. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to knock out these. And why didn't I just go in from the side? You'll see. those ones out because I'm actually going to get back inside well actually I could have gone in from the side and not hook shot I guess I'm just continuing to be a bit mindless <laughs> all right so these diamond blocks they need to go in here why diamond? I don't specifically know. Uh, in terms of how the reactors work, it has something to do with uh, the reaction of the nuclear reactor and how well it reacts. But basically, according to the internet, this is the best design. Now I need all those resin ender buckets. Boop, boop, boop. 
ップ。And then I do that, and I really, really don't want to fall in. The reason being is, uh, Resident Ender, if you didn't know, teleports you. If you fall in, you randomly get teleported. And it can be quite some distance if you're not careful. So I just need to go around the outside and fill in all these spots with Resident Ender. Flowing blocks don't matter, and that's why I am filling in from the top, and why I only need 16 buckets. Otherwise, I'd need 16 times 5. Um, and that would be a lot, a lot of enderpearls. Here we go, last two. There, and there. Now the whole thing is completely filled with Reason and Ender. And I just need to seal it off now. Hooray! With the two reactor casings left over. Isn't it beautiful? So, now I'm just going to go back up, I'm going to get the fuel, and I'm going to bring it back down, as well as some cabling to get it to where I need it to go. See you soon. Alright, I'm back. I have an inventory full of transfer pipes. I have a transfer node, and I have 16 speed upgrades. Transfer node, speed upgrades, they go in here. Uh, I think 16 is the maximum, but um, we shall see. It's obviously not generating anything yet because it doesn't have fuel in it, and I'm going to bring fuel back down to it soon, but now I'm just going to time lapse here while I get this cable all the way back to our machines. See you soon. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about the darkness in that last part. I uh, totally forgot to take enough torches with me. But now, using this here functionality, I can put Eulorium in and 
we have a full core fuel status. Let me remove any I for a second. Uh, fuel rods, five. Capacity, 100,000 millibuckets of fuel. I have 100,000 in there and no waste. So let's start this puppy up. We are currently getting... Now this thing is not running at optimal temperature, it's actually being run on what's called runaway uh, power, which means that the fuel rods haven't been adjusted at all. Um, so it's producing a ridiculous amount of power right now, uh, and this isn't the normal heat that we would uh, run this thing on. Um, but as you can see, default settings it's producing 11,660-ish energy per tick. And there we go, that's uh, 100 million redstone flux already produced. So I'll just deactivate the reactor and it cools down really fast. But that's a really powerful reactor. I don't think we're going to have energy worries for a while. And this is currently holding and transferring 32,000 RF a tick. Um, so that's just nuts to me. It has nowhere to put that power at the moment, um, unfortunately, but we will solve that in a second. What I want to do before uh, we go back up to the base though, is that I want to adjust these. So I'm going to set them at about 50% for now, so that uh, the whole thing is running at about um, 50% capacity, um, or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how the math works, but I know that I don't want them to run at full heat all the time, because that would just produce too much, um, too much energy and rip through the fuel too quickly. But um, if we activate the reactor now, you'll see it's not going to heat up quite so far but we're still producing 7,200 RF a tick, roughly, and it's still going up. So I expect it'll be more like 7,375-ish. Uh, slightly over. No, it looks like it's going to stick around 70, so 7,370 thousand um, and its production of waste is actually kind of slow which is annoying because we won't be able to upgrade this reactor yes it can be upgraded even further um, by turning into a steam producer uh, this reactor would become a steam producer and then it would send the steam to turbines that's why the room is so huge because I want these turbines to be able to fit in here later four of them uh, each cardinal direction hopefully so um, I'm going to go back up to the workshop, I'll see you up there, and we will continue on with the episode. See you soon. Hello everyone, I'm back. Um, so in the meantime what I've done is I went straight to an elite energy cube. Uh, and to make an elite energy cube, let me see if I can wire it correctly. Yeah, see. Um, required energy tablets and control circuits. I've done control circuits in episode 17, but energy tablets are like that. And then, uh, but it also needed an advanced energy cube and first of all a basic energy cube. And it's uh, very simple to upgrade to each of them, especially when you have the resources that I do. Um, I couldn't get to the ultimate energy cube, not just yet anyway. Um, and I think basically what's going to happen is all around the base is going to be these things. Uh, and that's how power is going to get around the base. Um, by having these buffer cubes everywhere. And the reactor downstairs, uh, once I set up the automation correctly later on, I'm just going to let it run because I want some waste out of it. Um, later on, uh, the reactor is just going to fill up all the energy cubes around the base. So, I promise some aesthetic building today and that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, 
So the first place for me to start actually was uh, looking around. I have my new chisel tool, by the way. Made that off camera. It's just a piece of an ironing gut with a stick. Um, but with a chisel tool, I'm looking around my uh, my chest. I'm wondering, okay, so what do I want to make these walls out of? Well. I want them to look shaped, so we're talking man-made stuff like bricks. Um, I like the hewn out of the walls kind of feel, but it's not it's not right for like the center of a fortress, you know. Like um, dwarves, while they like their natural rock and so on, they would probably really appreciate um, really well-crafted stone, a stone with shape. So we're talking bricks and um, Corinthian pillars and that sort of thing. So, um, that also got me thinking about, okay, so I have a lot of marble Corinthian pillars, Greek, that sort of thing, um, and I can start using that marble. So, we could also look at doing marble, uh, and I'll, uh, that'll be definitely one of the things we try. Um, as you can see, it's a chisel material, and if I use my chisel, by the way, this is how you use a chisel. You stick the block you want to change in the middle, and then you simply pick out. So if I just do that now, I'm one down from there, but I've gained a marble brick. And a marble brick looks like that. But I can also change it back. For and in most cases, for all intents and purposes, all of these blocks are the same as this block, um, or dictionary-wise. So recipes recognize marble stuff. Uh, as well as marble, I was looking through chisel. As you can see, I've looked up chisel here, and in fact, I can get more specific at mod.chisel. Um, looking at all the different things that you can make out of, like, stone, different kinds of stone. We don't actually have any chisel limestone. We've got lots of emashes limestone. I think that's emashes. Yeah, emashes. Um... So we can't really make the limestone stuff, not yet, at least. I might like to make some lim limestone stuff later, but we'll have to find it out in the world. Which it will be out there, I've seen it before, it's just further out there somewhere. Um, so, as well as marble, I was thinking about, well, basic carved stone. We can do basic carved stone. Um, we can use marble pillaring. Uh, where are those blocks? Here they are, fantasy blocks, um, because they look really nice as well. And to make fantasy blocks, you surround, you get this, and you get these, and let's just make as many as we can for demonstration purposes. There we go, we got a stack of 64. So fantasy blocks look like this. I think that looks really nice as well. Um, and using a chisel, we look at fantasy blocks. We also got like these gold caps. Um, we can do this sort of thing. And I'll just quickly prepare and show you. Uh, there we go. We'll do. So if we do that, and then that, and then. It. There we go. It's a mini pillar. <laughs> there's the cap, there's the base, there's the center. Looks pretty cool, all things considered. So we could make it out of fantasy blocks as well, or a mix of both of them. I think that's where we're going to go to begin with, is a mix of them. Um, which also means that I'm going to have to make a whole lot of chisel stuff, uh, carpenter stuff as well. Because I quite, I really do want to use some of the carpenter's stuff. Uh, which means I'm going to need to make some more carpenter's blocks, which is easy enough. I am going to run down on wood, though. <laughs> I really should set up a tree farm. Like, desperately set up a tree farm.
Okay, so we've got a bunch of carpenters, blocks and slopes. I probably won't need the blocks so much. Um, more that I actually need the slopes, really, so I'll just grab as many of those as I can. And let's get started. So where to start, really, is to pick out um, like a block of this hallway. We can always change it later, but let's go with five wide. So actually seven wide. One, two, three, four, five. I want gaps of five, I think. Uh, but then I want a detail every five blocks. So we want something like standard marble, I think, for the walls. And let's go for something that's going to repeat really well. Most of these actually have uh, what they call connected textures, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I get these five, one just looks like that, but then I can expand it out like that, you see, and it um, looks really nice. So, but then also we could have something like these. Yeah, so this is basically my creative process in action, is I, uh, I sit down and I pick out what's going to look the best. And I might want to try radial carved, or this might be a bit busy. Yeah, that's a bit busy, and it doesn't connect either. Um, how about just some straight up marble block? Yeah, I think we'll go with straight up marble block. I do like the indented stuff, but the but what's going to happen is um, I'm going to extrude these walls a little bit. You'll see what I mean in a second. Right, and then some fantasy blocks. What do we want fantasy block wise? So here's what I'm thinking is we're going to have that and oh, that, this and that. Looking good so far. But let me grab some of these fantasy pillars just to begin with, so that I can um, just get an idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> Always a good idea to know what you're doing. You see, so coming down the, the hall will look pretty cool extruded in and out like this. Uh, and these blocks in here, I'm not going to use chisel for, I mean carpenters for these, but they do need to change as well. So, let's just reset all of these so that my inventory doesn't start filling up. see. Maybe we want to try something like that. Oh yeah, that looks kind of nice. I want to get some of these. I hope you're getting an idea of how I work. <laughs> it is a lot of trial and error, you know. Um, and this may not even be the design I settle on. Because um, there's a lot of other things that I could try as well. Like, for instance, 
maybe I want to get rid of these two blocks on each side. Right. Put these pillars in here. Get more slopes. Whoop, wrong way, slope. You have to place slopes similar to the way that you place steers. Um, put those here, except take these ones off. And then replace these. with that cap and stuff that I did before, right? So something like that all along the walls. Or alternatively, I might want to go all fantasy. Weathered, damaged, faded, fantasy. Let's go with weathered. Weathered many, many bricks. <laughs> Take out these mar this marble. And then just keep on placing it. Right? And then you can think, oh, well, that's actually kind of a bit busy. Although it does have a sweet illusion where it looks like it's bulging out at the sides a little bit. <laughs> um, and then I might change it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop recording here. I'm going to mess around with a few designs. These walls will be covered in different designs and I'll come back to showcase them. I'll see you soon. All right, I'm back, and I have uh, four different designs to show you. First of all, I wanted to try do, doing a darker design, so I've tried doing it with stone bricks. Now, all of these designs so far um, have been done basically with chisel alone. There wasn't much else in the other mods that I was really super interested in um, aesthetically for the blocks to use, but... Uh, this one is stone design and it basically doesn't use any um, slopes or anything because it has a bit more of a brutal um, straight edge look to it. And it's got the nice little snakies in the walls. Uh, the next one is the marble design. I quite like this one. Um, it's basically a similar idea. It's got a lot of um, floor space because the... Um, Carpenter's blocks. The yeah, the slopes don't come down onto the floor. They're they're here only. And you can jump up and run around in them. Um, but it's got a lot more like mm, stonework to it. There's a lot more pattern and stuff like that with the caps and 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 ridges and things and the way it fits around the traveling stones. By the way, doing these designs while the camera keeps zooming in and out from getting the buff is really annoying. <laughs> Uh, oh well. Um, the next one is the fantasy design. I used night ore in this one um, for the light sources. Um, I think so far this is my favourite one overall. Um, just It just looks nice. <laughs> There's a lot to it. There's a lot of interesting stuff to it. I really like the marble one. Um, but I think I like this one more, just just a little bit more. It was a really tough decision in the end, but I think I'm going to go with the fantasy one. And the final one, which we're not going with, but we might do it for other sections of the base, um, is this kind of like modern design. Uh, I was thinking, okay, so like, if dwarves were brought into the 21st century, um, what would they start doing their tunnels out of? Would they get really like into concrete? Would concrete be like basically their bread and butter and support beams and things like that. I think that would be the way that would go, really. Um, it's really interesting, this concrete actually 
has slight elevation. I don't know whether you can see it in the video, but when I step down off these um, traveling stones, the camera lowers down a little bit. They're not quite as high up, but you can't see the how how much further down they are. They flash. But anyway, yeah, there is this cool weathered look to it. Um, and I'm using these industrial lamps from Project Red. Uh, I think it looks really cool. Might use it for like deep sections of the base, but the upper sections will be this like fantasy brick kind of really good looking carved out. Um, and maybe I'll find an excuse to bring back this marble one. But basically, now that this is here, the entire base is going to be designed around um, this, this design here. I mean, individual rooms might have a particular theme to them, but as far as like all the hallways, the crossroads, the meeting hall, that sort of thing, it's all going to be based around this like fantasy brick stuff. So yeah, I'm going to... Um, I seem to only be getting a few frames a second, so I'm going to stop running around and making everyone sick from frame lag and take a look at how long the video is so far, uh, and I'll be back. See you soon.